Yo, once again, it's on. Back at you one more again, Real Kens TV in the house like kitchen sinks. You know, recently I've had a whole lot of requests um, to do a, a credit video. Um, I did a video, you know, talking about how I was able to get my credit score up over 700 uh, in a matter of two years, actually less than two years. And I had an influx of inboxes and, and, and comments, Kens, Kens. Please, would you do a, a, a credit video one time for us? Sunday. My Cowboys are not playing until late on this evening. Uh, we do fully expect to beat the Steelers. Typically don't do videos on Sunday because I'm, I'm busy with my fantasy football. I'm in three uh, separate leagues. And also, I love NFL. But nevertheless, I will oblige to you all's wishes. And do a credit video. Just understand that, you know, I offer these services uh, around town. I've, I've helped a handful of people. I'm not going to sit up here and act as though I've helped hundreds of people, but I've helped uh, a handful of people. I'm very, very selective as far as who I deal with, because some people, you know, they they want information from you, and then you find that they're just ultimately wasting your time. So I'm gonna put the cash app up. Um, you know, if you can bless the cash app or whatever for this information that I'm giving you that I typically would charge for, that's cool. If you can't, that's cool just as well. You know, share the video. Um, at the very least, share the video, like it, and subscribe to the Chiz Allen if you're not already subscribed. So again, Kens, how did you get your credit up in, in, in two years? I came home from prison. I've always known about credit. I've always kind of dibbled and dabbled in credit. So it wasn't as though it was, I was a first timer. The young lady that I was with at the time, um, she had gotten her credit score up to like 700 just as well. And so she was kind of giving me the, you know, the blueprint as far as how to do it. First thing about credit, before you do anything, understand, understand credit. You know, understand that you need to learn and educate yourself as much as you possibly can so that you'll learn how to not only uh, uh, obtain good credit, but to keep it. See, it's a key word, keep. Getting good credit is not really that hard, but being able to keep it to, to you know, uh, have the wherewithal or the ability, if you will, to maintain it. That can get a little dicey, a little tricky. So as I mentioned, continuously understand and educate yourself about credit and how it works. Now, if you know absolutely nothing about credit, you have three major credit bureaus. You got Experian, you have uh, Equifax, and you have TransUnion. Well, Kens, what does that mean? What is three uh, major credit bureaus? Those are the major bureaus that most... Uh, Individuals that, you know, you're looking to uh, uh, loan you money, lend you, extend you credit, they're going to check those. Nine times out of ten, they're not going to check all three, but they're typically going to check two of them. Some just do one, but typically they're going to check both of them. The significance is that with these credit bureaus... Uh, you know, with, with the TransUnion, with the uh, Equifax, with the um, um, Experian. The thing about them is you may have a 600 credit score on one, a 640 on the other one, and a 590 on, on the other one, depending on how you go about checking your credit. The most important one that I've found is Experian. That's the most accurate one. Not to say that TransUnion is not, not to say that Equifax is not, but Experian tends to be the one that you pay attention to the most. And then TransUnion, a lot of people use the TransUnion, and then the Equifax, obviously, it's the last one. What credit is, is, is it's basically your worthiness. If you come to me and you borrow 20 bucks and you say, I'm gonna pay you back next Friday, and you pay me back next Friday, and let's just say I'm keeping score. That's a good mark that goes in your favor. You pay me back at the time you said you was going to pay me back. You come to me again, and you borrow another 20 bucks. 
gonna give it back to you next Friday. It's a good mark. You pay me back. And you do that three or four different times, and every single time you've paid me back. So now I'm gonna extend your credit up to okay, well, instead of uh borrowing 20 from me, do you need 60 this time? Because you've shown that you're worthy of your word and, and paying me back. But on the flip side, if you ask me for 20 bucks and you tell me you're gonna give it back to me on Friday. And then you give it back maybe, you know, the following Monday or Tuesday. Yeah, you pay me back, but that's going to be a mark against you. I was paid back, but it was three or four days later, and that's not what the agreement was. So then you come to me again, and you need credit, and okay, now I'm going to go ahead and extend this to you. I'm going to extend this to you, but make sure that you pay me back like you said you was going to. Then you do the same thing. You're supposed to pay me back the following Friday. Monday or Tuesday comes around and you pay me the credit. Now you need me again. You come to me the next time. Either I'm going to decline because you're not paying me back when you say you're going to pay me back. Or I'm going to say, okay, well now, you know, it's 20 bucks, man. And I, I can loan you some money, but I can only loan you 10. Your credit rating has gone down. Come on, man. I've been paying you back. Yeah, but you haven't paid me back when you said you was going to. So now when I loan you the 10, you're going to have to pay me back, you know, three or four different times on time to get that, raise that limit back up to 20. And that's just kind of how real credit actually works. How I was able to establish credit in, in less than two years was, you know, you have these companies that come along and, and oh man, uh, uh, if you, if you pay us this amount of money, We'll get your credit score up to 800 in, in 60 days. They're lying. There's no such thing. Are there scenarios? Yes, that can happen. But you already have to have an established credit file. And let's just say you have a couple negative items on your credit. And they're able to have those items removed. But you still have all of this positive credit over here. I can see them getting your score up in the 700s. You know, something like that. The higher 700s. But you already have established credit follow what i'm saying now there's no such thing as we can just come along and get your credit score up you know to 750 760 860 days not possible 99 percent of the uh scenarios and cases that is not possible the first thing that i would recommend and i'm telling you all what i personally did and the people that i've helped what i tell them to do Get you a secured credit card. I don't care what your credit score is. If you're in the 400s, the low 500s, it doesn't matter. Don't worry about your score initially. Get you a secured credit card. Me personally, I went through Capital One. Um, I went through Capital One and got a secured credit card. Well, Kians, what's a secured credit card? A secured credit card is a credit card that's secured by your deposit. So if you send in 200 bucks, that's what your limit is going to be. If you send in 300 bucks, that's what your limit will be. If you send in $500, that's what your limit is going to be. Now, people get the misconception that the more that I send in, the better that it looks. It doesn't make a difference. Learn how to work with smaller money before you go to larger money. So 200 bucks is typically the minimum. Send in $200. When you send them in 200 bucks, now you have an open line of credit. You always want to find a company that graduates you, though, when you do a secured credit card. Because the difference between a secured credit card is, as I mentioned, you send in the deposit. Whatever the deposit is, that's your uh, your limit. An uh, unsecured credit card is based off of your credit, and you don't send in a deposit. So they may extend you a line of credit, let's just say 500 bucks. Well, you don't have to send in a deposit. That's the difference between secured and unsecured. But when you're first starting out, and, or your credit's bad... Typically, you're going to have to go with a uh, secured credit card. Y'all rock with me. Let me know where you're chiming in from. Capital One, 200 bucks. They're pretty much going to approve everybody. As I was mentioning, make sure you find you a company. If you don't want to go with Capital One, make sure if you go with your credit union or your bank, make sure that they graduate you. Basically, what that means is after you've had that car for about a year, maybe 15 months at the most, they send you your deposit back and they make that secured card an unsecured card. 
So if you have a $200 uh, secured card and after 15 months you've been making your payments and what have you, they send that 200 bucks back to you. You know, they put it back in your account. And now they may say, okay, we're going to give you a, a $700 unsecured card. And every six months, you can apply to have that uh, limit raised. Some places is every 90 days, 91 days to be exact. So you always want to make sure that whatever company that you're dealing with, as far as your secure credit card, will graduate you. If you already have negative marks on your credit, don't worry about any of that. Don't worry about that off top. Because what you're trying to do is establish credit. What you're trying to do is understand credit. You're educating yourself and, and understanding how credit works. A lot of people just think, oh, man, if I just pay my bills on time, I'm going to have good credit. And that's part of it, but that's not solely how credit works. So now you have a copy of all three of your credit reports. You see, you take a highlighter, you know, yellow you know, highlighter, what have you, and you go through and you mark all the derogatory things on your credit. Some people have nothing on their credit. That's even better. That's even better because now you don't have to worry about the negative items on your credit. You can just build. When you get that secured credit card for 200 bucks. Make sure that you don't use too much of the money that's on the card. So, for instance, you have 200 bucks, you go get you some gas or something like that, $30, $40 in the tank. Now, you may have the money to pay it, but no, use your card. $30, $40 bucks in the tank. Let's just say 40 gas is high. You do that, pay it off. You want to do that about twice a month. Maybe even three times a month, but definitely twice a month. See, by doing that twice a month, by paying it off, even though your credit uh, bill is only going to be due once a month, but making two payments, now you have two payments being reported to the credit bureau two times a month, which is going to take your score up a lot faster. So if you spend 40 bucks, pay the 40. The second time, two weeks later, you spend 40 bucks, pay the 40 bucks off again. Now, it's okay to leave a small amount on there if you want to. Some say that you should never pay everything off on your credit. That's kind of, uh, I don't know. I, I can't say that that's a good thing, and I can't say that that's a bad thing. I can say that if you do leave something on there, leave a small amount, even if it's just five bucks, you know, 10 bucks. That's the balance. Even though you could pay it off, just leave it on there. And continue to do so every month. Understand this, that a late payment is basically, it hurts your credit just like a missed payment. Never be late. Understand when your bill is due. If your bill is due on the 7th of every month, the closing date may be the 10th. And the closing date means, okay, at the, on the closing date, which is the 10th, that's what the credit bureau is, they're going to close it out. When they close it out, meaning that for that particular month, that's the date that they're going to say, okay, this payment was made. It was due on the 7th, but he made the payment or she made the payment on the 5th. You see what I'm saying? There's a difference between the closing date and the actual uh, uh, due date. The closing date is the 10th and you pay, you pay it on the 10th or the 9th, it's still late because the due date is the 7th. So understand the difference. That's why I say educate yourself when it comes to credit. Understand the difference between the closing date and the due date. Your bill's due on the 7th of every month. You pay it by the 5th, the 4th, the 5th, the 6th. You continue to do so every month. That's all you're doing. Don't worry about any other credit at the time. Don't worry about any other credit cards. Nothing. Don't be alarmed when your score drops about 30 or 40 points initially. Man, Ken said, man, that this was going to raise my... I knew I shouldn't have listened to him. My score dropped 40 points. It's going to drop initially. <laughs> when you first get the card, your score is going to drop. Simmer down. Give it about two or three months, and then you're going to see a spike in your, in your score. So them 25, 30 points that it dropped, you're going to get those back. And now you're going to see your score go from a 500, a 505 to... 560. Wow. Never get too 
too comfortable though. Continue to do what you're doing. 40 bucks, make the payment. 40 bucks, make the payment. Twice a month minimum. Always monitor your credit uh, reports. Mon I monitor mine daily. Most of the time, they have apps to where you can, uh, like uh, TransUnion, they have one to where it's, it's a free app. You can go on there and, and monitor your score daily. And your score's not going to change daily, but just any sort of activity and just making sure that, you know, no one uh, has access to your uh, social security number and things of that nature. You do that for about six months. Now you're going to check your mail. And you're going to start to get other, uh, and it could be a little sooner. You're going to start to get other offers. Other companies, they want to send you credit cards now. We give you a thousand dollar limit. Just send us a ninety nine dollars up front, or if you don't have to send it up front, they'll deduct the ninety nine dollars from the thousand uh, dollar. Basically, you have a ninety nine dollar bill. You see what I'm saying? So you have to pay that off before you have access to that thousand dollar limit. I'm gonna stay away from those cards. High interest, 25, 26 percent interest want to stay away from those cards understand that this takes time it's not going to happen overnight had your capital one card for six months keep doing the exact same thing after about nine months nine months to a year it's okay to get you another card because you're going to start to get better offers you're going to be high interest rates but you'll get better offers and you get you another card this particular card probably won't be a secure card. It'll just be a high interest credit card. Credit is meant to be used because you want to use it, not because you have to use it. So when they're going over your credit reports and they're looking and they're saying, okay, you know, your utilization is very, very important. This second card, they may give you a thousand dollar limit. They give you a thousand dollar limit. You got a high interest rate. You want to keep your utilization. Some people say 30%. Some people say 10%. That's in, entirely too high. I'd say 2 to 5%. So if you got a $1,000 card, never go over 50 bucks. Like I said earlier, just use it for gas, small purchases, pay it off. Never go over 50 bucks. See, credit is a tool. It's, you're not meant, credit is not meant to be, you know, dependent on, you know, to live off of credit. No, you're robbing Peter to pay Paul. You just use credit again because you simply want to use it. So now you have that second card, thousand dollar limit, keeping your utilization low, two to five percent. Forty, fifty dollars, sixty dollar purchases, two weeks paying it off. You continue to do that. So now you have two credit cards that are reporting to major credit bureaus twice a month. Now your score goes up from a 560. You'll look up and you had about a 640. Moving on up, moving on up. You moving on up. Now you're learning how to establish credit. You're learning how to, to, to build credit. If you go to the dentist and you got, you know, three or four cavities in your mouth and the dentist pulls those, those cavities out. Well, your mouth doesn't hurt anymore. You don't have those cavities in your mouth, but guess what? Now you're missing three or four teeth. So now you have to feel, okay, you have to figure out how am I going to replace these three or four uh, uh, teeth that the dentist just pulled? Same thing with credit. Any negative item on your credit, they have to remove it after seven years. You don't have to send in for it. You don't have to write. It must be removed after seven years. Or something what's called an early exclusion, and they'll remove it maybe up to a year early after six years, but you have to request that. But after seven years, anything on your credit must be removed. I don't care if it's student loans. I don't care if it's doctor bills. I don't care what it is. It has to be removed from your credit report after seven years. Depending on the derogatory items that are on your credit, if it's been on there five, you know, five years or better, just leave it alone. Because by the time you start to establish credit, it's going to fall off anyway. By law, it has to. 
They have what's called dispute letters. You can send in dispute letters, which I offer those as well. And if you just say a cable bill, phone bill, or something of that nature, there's a letter that you can send into the credit bureaus with proof of who you are, you know, a copy of your driver's license, social security card. Upon, let me give you an example. Upon uh, uh, reviewing my credit report, I found that this item, you put the item, there's an account number, um, is listed on my credit report. Could you please send me uh, the original contract bearing my signature? Simple letter like that. You send it into the uh, the credit agencies. If they can't send you an original contract that has your signature, they must remove it from your credit report. That's called a dispute letter. Don't even, as I mentioned, don't even worry about disputing the negative items until after about a year. And if the negative items are five years or older, don't even worry about disputing them anyway. They're going to fall off soon. Sometimes it doesn't even take seven years. I've seen things fall off credit after four or five years. There's a misconception, another misconception about credit. If I pay everything off, man, I, and my, my score is going to go up. No. No. If you pay everything off, you're doing what's morally right. But paying an item off on your credit does not make your credit go up. It may go up three or four points, five points. So say you have a, a charge off on your credit for 400 bucks. And you pay it off. They offer you a settlement. Okay, if you give us uh, 260, this debt will be settled. You settle the debt. But it's still on your credit report. <laughs> it's a misconception. If you pay something off, it's still going to be on your credit report. Now they have what's called a uh, pay for delete. Pay for delete means you put in writing that if I pay you all this $400, that you're going to uh, uh, delete this from, well, you'll no longer dispute this. You'll delete this basically off my credit report. No longer report this. They can't go in and physically delete it, but what they'll do is no longer report that, which is essentially the same thing as deleting it. So we'll just use delete. We'll delete this off of, uh, you'll delete this off of my credit report. And not just for 30 days, 60 days, because it's a trick they use. They'll delete it, but then it'll come back for good, forever. This will never return to my credit report. And if they put that in writing, most companies don't do pay for deletes for whatever reason. I don't see why they don't, but some do. And if they'll put that in writing and you can negotiate a figure, you owe 400 bucks and you all go back and forth or whatever. Look, man, I got 150. That's all I got. Man. Put it in writing. I pay this 150. This debt goes away as far as on my credit report. Then it's okay to pay something off on your credit report. And like I said, unless you just morally want to do the right thing. Outside of that, understand that by paying something off on your credit does not make your credit score go up other than maybe a few points. Facts. Now you're a year in. Okay. Got two credit cards. My score is up to about 650. Feeling good about myself. I'm getting all these credit card offers in the mail. Rip them up. You got two credit cards. Credit agent, they want to see when people are looking to loan you money, to lend you money, they don't want to see eight credit cards on your credit reports. They want to see different variations of credit. See, a credit card is called revolving credit. Revolving credit just basically means over and over. You're going to make a payment over and over, and there's really no actual due date. There's no ending date. You got an installment loan or installment credit. There's an ending date. Mortgage. Car payment. Uh, go get some furniture, finance some furniture. Things of that nature. Installment loans, installment credit. You want to have a mixture of both. You already have two revolving uh, credit lines. So now you may go get, and I don't recommend going to get a car payment. I don't recommend, I don't like car payments, I don't, but I understand that people feel as though they have to, to get a car payment, which we don't. We just feel like we do. 
But let's just say you have a car payment. You're making those payments every month. So now the credit agency, they're, they're looking, these businesses that you're going to, okay, he has two lines of credit over here, as I mentioned, revolving, and he has an installment loan over here. Maybe get you another installment loan, maybe, you know, furniture or something like that. Something that you really have the money to pay for, but you just say, you know what, I'm going to just stick this in my savings account or whatever and make the payments each month from that so that it'll make my credit look better. So now you have four, uh, you have four lines of credit on your credit report. I was trying to tell a friend of mine. He was like, man, me and my wife, we trying to build, you know, our credit up or whatever. We got a credit card and that's all. We just going to use this one credit card and just for emergencies. Emergencies are not, credit cards are not meant for emergencies. Emergency savings is meant for emergencies. I kept trying to tell him, well, I didn't keep trying to tell him, but I did tell him, listen, bro, y'all need to use this card. Having this card and not using it doesn't mean anything. They want to see activity. I've seen instances to where people haven't used their card for a while and they'll close the card, the account down, or they'll lower their limit drastically. If you have a card, use it, but you just use it responsibly. Keep your utilization low. You got a thousand dollar card, 50, 60 bucks, man. That's it. Pay it off twice a month. He came back to me after a year. He was like, bro, you was right, man. Our credit score went up a little bit, but we still not, you know, we're still not being able to, you know, be approved for the things that we thought because you have to show that you're using this credit, but you have to show that you're using it responsibly. When they see that you have four credit cards and all of them stay maxed out, first of all, your score is going to dip because you're over the, the threshold, the utilization threshold. That lets agencies know, that, lo that lets businesses know, oh, this person's, you know, they're relying on credit. They're depending on credit. So if you lose your job, you get sick, Lord forbid. If your bill is fifty bucks, you can you can make that, you can manage that. Got a thousand dollar card, your bill's fifty, sixty bucks, you can manage that. But you got a thousand dollar card and your bill is is eight fifty. On every single card, you're not gonna be able to manage that. And they look at these things. Oh, well, this person, they're relying on credit. They must have credit. Nah, decline. We we high risk so again you got installment credit and you got revolving credit have a mixture of both in there most companies want to see you know at least six lines of credit on your on your uh credit reports one line's not gonna get it it's a good start now when i say one line one card one account that's open as i was telling my friend one line of credit is not going to get it. It's just a starting point. Get you about six good lines that you can afford and that you can handle. And you continue to do the same thing and you maintain. Keep the amount small. Pay your bills every two weeks. You can do the same on a car payment. Even though your car payment may be 400 bucks a month. You can pay it every two weeks. Yeah. You definitely can. All of these things are going to drastically help your credit. And that's what I did. I continue to do so. Now, I had a little bit more than uh, four lines of credit. <laughs> I, I was accepting every card. I had about seven, eight cards. I had, and my credit score was, was great. It was on the way to being great. It was over 700 until I got my car stolen, and I handled that situation in a totally, I would, if I had a chance to uh, do it over, I would do things totally different. Credit doesn't discriminate. They don't know if you're black, you white. It's your word, it's your worthiness. You can be a 10 time felon and have an 800 credit score. I got a buddy that I helped out. He came to me. He seen that, you know, I was doing pretty well as far as my credit. He said, bro, I need to get my credit up. All right. I helped him with his credit. Now, he wanted me to kind of shadow him for, like, the first year or so. Anytime he went to make a move, he'd be like, hey, Kins, okay, should I do this? Should I do that? I'm going to do this. How much should I pay? And I shadowed him. Now, he's my buddy, but business is business. 
He paid me a nice, a nice ransom. And um, it was about three years ago, a little bit over three years ago. He just bought his first apartment complex via credit. Not to say that I did anything. Well, not to say that I put, he put in the work, the, dis, the discipline. I was kind of like a coach. I just kind of guided him and told him. He said, bro, if it wasn't for you, man, he just bought his first apartment complex. It's a fourplex, four apartments. Eventually, he's going to buy another and another. His goal was to be in the real estate game, but he didn't have the credit. He listened to everything that I told him. And again, I'm not a know-it-all. There's plenty of people that know way more about credit than me. I'm just going off of my personal experiences. He's able to do so. Any of you all that's military affiliated, you've been in the military, you have an immediate family member, such as a mother, father, father, grandparent, brother, sister, or you live with someone that's in the military, in the military, or who has been in the military. It's a credit union, Navy Federal Credit Union. Best credit union that I've ever seen. They extend the highest credit limits of anybody by far. Go to their website. You can call them. You can join over the phone. You show proof of, you know, how you're eligible. It doesn't matter if it's a great, great grandparent that's deceased. You don't have to show. You can give their name and somehow they're able to look them up. Now, don't lie because they do audits. And when they come back and do audits, you may have your account going for five or six months and then boom, everything shut down because they've done an audit and they've verified the information or attempted to verify the information that you gave them upon opening the account and it wasn't accurate. So don't lie. But if you meet the qualifications, get in with Navy Federal Credit Union and do the exact same thing that I said as far as the secured credit cards man navy federal my first my first uh credit card that they gave me after i did the secure credit card for 200 bucks and i kept it for like maybe four or five months my first platinum card that i got with them had an eight thousand dollar limit on it and i thought that was kind of low after all <clears throat> excuse me i was seeing people get 15 and twenty thousand with 500 and, you know 550 credit scores but that's what they gave me that's what i accepted and that's what it was navy federal credit I've given you all the blueprint. I could sit here all day and talk about credit. But I've given you the blueprint as far as getting on your journey, beginning your journey to an 800 credit score. It's definitely possible. Oftentimes we get out of prison and, man, I don't have nothing, man. Ain't nobody looking out for me, man. I don't. But you have your word. <laughs> See, your word is something that they can't take away from you, but you have to hold true and be true to your word. These people extend you money. They don't know you, but they trust the fact that you're going to pay them back. Don't get the money and run. That's only going to go get the money. Go get the money. Yeah, go get the money, but don't run. Don't run once you get the money. Because these marks go against you and they hurt you. Now, ultimately, you know, I'm, I'm, I listen there's a there's an individual there's a gentleman named uh, uh, Dave Ramsey I listen to him quite frequently and one of his mottos one of his phrases is cash is king debt is done I believe that cash is king and debt is done problem is everybody doesn't have cash now there, there are things that you can do you have to put in work if you have a debt that you're trying to pay, if you have a mortgage, if you 30-year mortgages, no, 15. 15. Don't do 30-year mortgages. And you want to throw money at that debt. You want to throw money at it. Well, Ken's, I can only pay what I can pay. Exactly. Live like nobody else today to live like nobody else tomorrow. No, that's not my quote. That's, that's what Dave Ramsey, uh, that's his motto. 
I don't care if you got a job making 80,000 a year, you got a good job, your wife has a good job, she's making, you know, uh, uh, the same 80,000, 70,000, 90,000, 100,000, whatever, you all bringing in 150, 160,000 collectively as, you know, husband and wife, you may have to go get you a side gig, you may have to go deliver pizzas, do a little DoorDash, a little Uber and whatever, because guess what? An extra two fifty, three hundred a week that you make, you take that bread and you throw it at that debt. You doing the same, she's doing the same. I know, you know, if you have small kids, it may be difficult. But whenever you can do these things, you cut out, you know, going to the movies. You cut out uh, going to the mall and spending unnecessary money to live like nobody else today, to live like nobody else tomorrow. Everybody else is going on vacation, doing this and doing that, but they spending money. It costs money to leave the house. Your time is going to come. For the next five, six years, that extra 300 a week that you're making or the, the, the 400 a week or 200 a week that she's making, that's an extra five, six hundred dollars a week. And then the things that you're cutting out that you used to do, you're saving another three, four hundred. Guess what? A month. Guess what? That's an extra two thousand dollars. That you can throw at your house payment. Throw it at the or at your debt. Throw it at it. Student loans. Throw it at it. Throw it at it. Throw it at it. Throw it at it. Then guess what? You look up and that debt is wiped out. House payment is paid off. Yeah, it's not gonna happen in a year or two. But you look up after six, seven years, debt free. You don't have a debt other than your bills that you can't get around, electric, insurance, you know, gas bills if you have gas, you know, groceries and things of that nature things that that require you to pay you know to live you're debt free so you have to be willing to do the things that everybody else is looking at like man why is he driving a 2011 uh honda i don't have no car payment attack your debts but in order to do so you have to do the things that most people are not willing to do. You have to be willing to live like nobody else today to live like nobody else tomorrow. Because seven and eight, seven, eight years later, you don't have a debt in sight. But the other individuals around you, they're up to here in debt. Just because you see, I've learned this. Just because you see people in big houses, my partner, man, shout out to uh, Jason V. Jason V TV. Y'all go check him out. Jason Dash V TV. Y'all go check him out, man. He got a YouTube channel, man. Family channel, man. Very successful uh, individual, and we and we've talked finances before. Just because an individual lives in a big house, and you see a Range Rover in the driveway, Lexus in the driveway, kids is in private school, doesn't mean that they're just floating in the dope. People often live beyond their means. Now, I know I've kind of gone into uh, gotten away from credit a little bit, but really I haven't when you really think about it. Remember what I said, use credit because you want to use credit, not because you have to. Once you get to the point to where you have a mortgage, you have no business. You don't even, I'm not going to say you have no business because I can't tell people what to do. But you don't need credit. You have an emergency uh, fund put up. Emergency fund is six months. Anything happens, your lifestyle doesn't change. I have enough money to put that's put up to where my lifestyle does not change. It gives me an opportunity to get me another gig, to get me another job. Six months to me. Dave Ramsey says six months. I say a year. But hey, I'm not the guru. Dave Ramsey's worth, you know, a few hundred million, and I'm worth, I don't know, less than a thousand bucks. But that's on paper because my mind, my mentality, I know a lot of stuff. I have a whole lot of knowledge. So I can't really say less than a thousand bucks because the things that I know is infinite. Again, I don't know everything. I just listen. I educate myself. I read. I learn.
Once you get to the point to where you, you have a mortgage, because you can pay a car off. Most people can pay a car off. Most people can, you know, just buy their furniture or buy, but a mortgage, you know, a lot of people can't just go in and buy a house. But he also talks about how he's seen situations where people lived in a, a one bedroom apartment, a two bedroom apartment. It was making nice money, like I just mentioned. And was doing things on the side and just saved and saved and saved. And after five or six years, they had 300000 to just go buy a house. No mortgage or anything. Depends on what you want to do. How hard, how much do you want it? Are you, in, you know, are you interested in impressing people at 30? Just think, if you work hard from 30 to 40. Discipline. You work hard. At 40 years old, you're going to be a millionaire. Less than probably before 40. You're going to own your own home. No mortgage. Your vehicles or whatever. So when you wouldn't go out and buy that $40,000 car, if you decide to do so, you write a check or you run your car. No car payments. My mother just bought a Lexus and she's not rich, but she has great credit. My mother has over 800 credit scores. One thing my mother always, my grandfather, your word is your bond. So we at the Lexus dealership, 2025 Lexus. She likes it. A little bit over what she wanted to spend. She's going to put down 50000 So she goes to a financial advisor or whatever. And they tell her, listen, you have enough. Why would you just put down fifty and then finance the remaining twenty? You have enough. Make a long story short, she just paid the whole thing off. Yeah, they were mad at the dealership. Oh, well, we're offering 1.9%. But I don't need 1.9%. I have my checkbook now. We're going to pay this thing off. Now, it wasn't quite 70, but it was in the, you know, 66, 67. She couldn't do that 30 years ago. <laughs> but she can do it today. Think about your future. Don't so much just, yeah, we got, we have to think about today. But also have a plan and think about your future. You have kids. They're going to want stuff. They're going to need stuff. They're, you know, the requirements and just, you know, your lady, your wife or what have you. Man, you can get good credit. Anybody. I don't care what your credit score is looking like right now. I don't care if you just filed bankruptcy. I don't care what your score is right now. You can turn that around and you can get get, get good credit. It's just not going to happen as quickly as most of us think that it's going to happen. And that's literally all I did. How I was able to get my credit score up over 700. Started with a secured credit card. $200 secured credit card from Capital One. And just kept making my payments. Twice a month I'd make payments. After about 15 months, they graduated me. Sent me my $200 back. And moved me to an uh, unsecured card. My limit was like 750 what it is but ultimately like I said once you get that mortgage you don't need credit anymore man credit to me is just to get a house not to go get a car payment you need a car payment for they say I don't know any actually I do know some to be honest I have one in my family Average millionaire drives a a used car. They're not getting Gucci bags and, and design. Yeah, you know, my aunt, she went and got her a little Gucci bag, but she deserved it. So that four or five thousand she spent on the bag, she could do that at this point in her life. Not thirty years ago. She doesn't do it on a regular, but it was just something like a little gift to herself. She works hard, she saves her money, 401k plan, she invests in her money, and that's another thing. 401k with your job. Stop doing it 3 and 4 and 5%, man. Boost it up 10, 15%, whatever your company uh, will match. With Ken's, man, I can't, man, that little $50, $60 a week, you ain't going to miss that. Pre-tax, you're not even going to miss it. Get your 401k up. Look into money market accounts. Mutual funds, but definitely look into money market accounts. There's all type of things that you can do that's going to earn you money, but it's over time not going to happen overnight it's not going to happen in a year it's not going to happen in five years 
keep investing. You vet you investing into yourself, your future, your kids. Don't matter if you're a felon. It does not matter. Don't matter what you make. I don't care if you only make 15, 16 bucks a month. An hour, I said a month. 15, 16 bucks. Uh, 15, 16 bucks a month. About what you make in the joint. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Invest in yourself, man. So what, you can't go buy the $400 Jordans right now. You don't need them anyway. What's Jordan doing for you? You don't need no $400 pair of Jordans. They cool, but you don't need them. You got to be willing to sacrifice. Continue to educate yourself. Go on to YouTube. Google. Anything and everything that you can possibly find as far as credit. But I've given you the blueprint exactly what to do. Like I said, for you all that want to dispute some of the items on your credit that may only be a year or two or three years old, I offer uh, dispute letters. You can go online and find dispute letters for free, the kind of generic ones, but they may work for you. I'm not saying that they won't. And you can dispute some of the negative items on your credit, but don't worry about that for the first year. Learn how to build credit and then learn how to maintain credit. Think about it. You get to the point to where you got a $20,000 uh, uh, credit card. $20,000 limit. You don't want to be going out here charging up five, six thousand dollars $6,000. The interest is going to kill you. The interest alone is going to be 100 bucks a month just for the interest. Because you're going to have a 17, 18 uh, percent APR. So this is what I tell my daughter. You know, the interest, you pay 160 bucks a month and wondering why the, 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 total is not really going down because that first hundred dollars is going towards interest so the sixty dollars is going towards the actual debt no you could i don't care if you got a twenty thousand dollar card continue good spending habits practice good spending habits 50 60 bucks 100 bucks something that you can pay off and it's not that big of a deal something that if you get sick or you lose your job you can pay out pay it off and maintain your credit because your credit is your word and at the end of the day, the word, your word, rather, is all that we really have. Now make sure to hit that cash out. Dollar sign Kenz, K-E-N-Z 1000. Dollar sign Kenz, K-E-N-Z 1000. If you don't have cash out, you got super thanks, super chats. I'm giving you an awful lot of information for free, man. And that's cool. If you can't, no worries like button subscribe comment definitely share you know you can live a better life so you got buy here pay here uh, uh car lots they want to charge you 100 bucks a week 120 130 bucks a week as soon as you miss one payment they come to pick your car up I didn't want to charge you, even though you missed your payment and it was $120, I didn't want to charge you $500 towing fees and, and repo fees and things of that nature to get it out, to get your car back. They're not reporting any of your payments on time to the credit bureaus. Why? Because they want you to come back. They don't want you to get out of, out of poverty. They don't want you to, to be able to, to learn about credit and, and, and have a nice credit score. No. They want you to continue to come back to them. That's how they stay in business. They go and buy a car for a thousand bucks, put five, six hundred bucks in it because they have their own mechanics. So now that's sixteen hundred they have in it. Let's just say two thousand dollars what they spent. Fourteen hundred buying the car, six hundred they put into the car. Two thousand bucks. They want you to put two thousand down because that's what they have in it. They haven't lost anything. Anything over top of two thousand dollars. It's all profit. Put the two thousand down that they that they have into the car, then they're gonna charge you one twenty a week. One twenty a week for the next two and a half years. Somebody do the math. I don't even know what that is. What is that roughly? This is not roughly five hundred dollars a month, six thousand dollars a year. 
two and a half years, you're paying 12, 15. I know I went a little overboard because they're going to want you to buy the warranty now. If you don't buy the warranty, oh, they're going to be mad with you. Well, we can't give it to you for 120 if you can't buy the warranty. It's going to be 140 a, uh, a week. So you're going to pay an extra thousand, fifteen hundred for the warranty. So you didn't pay fifteen thousand dollars for this vehicle. Not even in, in including tax and license and all of that stuff. You didn't pay fifteen bands for this vehicle that they spent two on. And really, you don't spent more than that because you put two thousand down. So essentially, you spent seventeen thousand dollars on a vehicle that they have two thousand dollars in. By making your payments over the course of 30 months, two years. We got to wise up. We have to smarten up. That's how they stand rich. Because off of the backs of, of poor people, off the backs of individuals that don't have any money, don't have any credit. That's how they rent to own places. You go in there and you get you some furniture because you don't have any furniture in your house. Ain't nothing wrong with having an air mattress. Ain't nothing wrong with 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 going to Goodwill or whatever you need to do. To get you some some furniture, over time, stop making these places rich, wealthy, rent to own places. Living room suit, bedroom suit, hundred dollars a week. Same thing as a, a, a buy here, pay here lot. Not reporting it to the credit bureau. They want you to continue to come back to them. High interest loans on a, on a vehicle. So when they do approve you for a vehicle, you so happy because you got a car. Well, I only wanted to pay $300 a month, but so what's your payment? Well, I mean, I couldn't really. What is your payment? Well, it's $430. $430 a month? Yeah. Um, well, how much did you put down? Well, I was trying to just put down a 1000 You know, you didn't got your income tax. I was trying to put down a 1000 How much? Well, I ended up putting 3000 down. But let me see that contract. Look at the kind of 23% interest rate. Well, I had to do what I had to do. I had to get back and forth. I needed a car, but you had enough money to... You got 7000 back on your taxes. But you put 3000 down on a car that gets eaten up by tax and, and license. And so really, it didn't put a dent in the payment whatsoever. You could have taken, out of the 7000 you could have taken four or five grand and went and bought you a car. With no payment. It's 2024, so now you're driving around in a 2020 Kia. Nothing wrong with Kia. I'm just using that as an example. You got your 2019, 2020 Kia with a 400 some dollar car payment. As soon as you miss a payment, they're going to come and get it with a 23% APR, which means over the course of 72 months, which is six years, you're going to pay more than double for that car. Well, I don't care. I just needed a car. It's the mentality. We have to get out of that. It's the mentality. Do the math. $450 a month. Over six years. Do the math. What's that, about $5,400 a year? Somewhere right around there? So you're going to end up paying about... 31, 32,000 for that vehicle. That you're upside down in, meaning that you owe money on the car, like the you're not, cars depreciate. So at the end of that six years, you done paid 32, $33,000 for a car that means that's worth absolutely nothing. 2020, 2019 Kia, after six years. 2030, the car's 11 years old. What are you going to get? Two or three thousand for the car? Three or four thousand if you, if it's well kept? Probably not even that. It's going to have 300,000 miles on it. We have to start thinking smarter, man. Educating ourselves and educating our minds, man. Because if we don't, these rent to own places, these buy here, pay here lots, these check cashing places, borrow 400 and, 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 you know, the interest rate on it is, is 15%. And that's a cap because the, in Kentucky anyway, it's a cap. Because they would charge you 50% if they could. So you go and borrow 400 bucks. Now you owe, uh, what, 15%. Now you owe back, what, 460 But you don't have the 460 so as long as you continue to pay the, the 60 bucks every two weeks or however, you know, you're just paying them interest and interest and interest and interest and interest. 
but yet you still owe them the original 400 bucks. They keep us poor, man, because we're uneducated about ourselves. Man. Let's put these places out of business. But the only way we're going to put these places out of business is to educate our minds and understand our true worth and what credit really, really, the importance of it and what it really, really means, man. No chances, no, no, no uh, room to really be messing up because once you mess up, you really, really mess up, kind of like I did. You gotta wait seven whole years just to start all over. Just luckily, I know how to do business credit. Totally separate from my personal credit. But your average individual doesn't know that. I'm your average individual. I just educated myself real kids tv hopefully you like the video feel free to comment definitely share subscribe to the chisel if you're not already subscribed be sure to hit that post notification so anytime i bring you this this action and this this heat guess what you're amongst the first to receive definitely if you never shared a video share this video let's get this knowledge and this education out and get us out of the the, the trenches and get us out of the mud so that we can start living like nobody else today to live like nobody else tomorrow and the infamous words of dave ramsey real kins tv about to go watch football holla back